Alright, so this video we're going to look at the nth root theorem. So if n is any positive integer, r is a positive real number, and theta is in degrees, then the non-zero complex number r cosine theta plus i sine the theta has exactly n distinct nth roots given by this right here. Okay, so what do we mean has exactly n distinct nth roots? Okay, so that would mean it would have four fourth roots, three cube roots, okay, two square roots, or five fifth roots, okay. And the way that we find them is with this right here. So if this is our complex number, and notice it's in trigonometric form, okay, so in the example that I'm going to do, the complex number is going to be in rectangular form. We'll have to convert it to trigonometric form and then apply this theorem. So your complex number is in trigonometric form, so it would be the nth root of r times cosine of theta plus 360 degrees times k over n plus i sine theta plus 360 degrees times k over n, where k is 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1. Alright, now I'm going to explain all this as we're working the example of what's going on. Okay. Now, let me say this, you can also do this if, you're, if your angle is in radians, okay, if your angle is in radians, instead of 360, you would just have 2 pi k, okay, it would be 2 pi instead of 360, okay. The example I'm going to do is going to be in uh, degrees, but it's, I mean, it's all work the same. Okay, and I'm going to have two examples. I'll do them in separate videos. Okay, uh, so you might want to check both of them out. They're each a little bit different. All right, so let's go to our first example. So here we want to find all fourth roots. Okay, find all fourth roots. Well, notice that our complex number is in rectangular form. So we need to convert it to trigonometric form. Now I'm going to kind of go through the conversion, uh, but if you want to know how to convert from rectangular form to trigonometric form or trigonometric form to rectangular form, I've got some videos on those that you can check those out. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is find R, okay, because remember it's R See, we need it in this form here, R, let me do it in a different color. We're going to have, it's going to be R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. So we need R and theta. Well, remember, and, and also remember, this is in the form X plus Y times I, okay? So we know that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. <clears throat> All right, so r is going to be negative 8 squared plus, and then y is 8 square root of 3. So that's 8 square root of 3 squared. And it's the square root of all of that. All right, so getting that, we get r is equal to, and this comes out to 16. Okay, you can plug it into your calculator and verify that. <clears throat> All right, now I need theta. So to find theta, we're going to use the fact that tangent theta is equal to y over x. Okay. All right, so here I have tangent theta is equal to y, which is 8 square root of 3 over x, which in this case is negative 8. So I get tangent theta is equal to negative square root of 3. Alright, so now we got to figure out theta. Alright, so we're going to have to go back and remember what we've learned about uh, reference angles. Okay, now 
I've got tangent theta is negative square root of 3. Well, where is tangent negative? Tangent is negative in the second quadrant. Okay. Tangent is negative in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So which is it? Where's my angle? Is my angle in the second quadrant or is my angle in the fourth quadrant? Well, first thing we need to do is graph this thing. So it's negative 8, 8 square root of 3. So if I graph it, negative 8, we go to the left. Okay. Why? Remember, this is the real axis. This is the imaginary axis. This is the real part. This is the imaginary part. So the real part is negative 8. So I'll move over negative 8. The imaginary, the imaginary part is 8 square root of 3. So I go up 8 square root of 3. And so we can see that my angle theta is in the second quadrant. <clears throat> All right. So to, to calculate this, well, I need my reference angle. I need this angle here, this reference angle. Well, remember to find your reference angle, we have tangent theta, and I'll put a subscript r for my reference angle, is going to equal the positive value of square root of 3. Okay? All right. All right. So, my reference angle, well, the inverse tangent of square root of 3 is what? That is 60 degrees. So my reference angle is 60 degrees. Okay, so now I can get theta. So theta is equal to what? 180 minus 60. 180 minus 60 degrees, which is 120 degrees. Okay, all right, so now we've got theta and we have r. Okay, we've got theta and we've got r. So we, so now we can put this in to our complex number in trig form. So this can be written as 16 times cosine 120 plus i sine 120. Okay. All right, so now that we know r, see, we've got r, and we've got theta. All right, so let me rewrite the, uh, the formula we're going to use. So remember, that's the nth root of r, okay, times cosine theta plus 360k over n plus i times sine theta plus 360k over n. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. All right, so you can see we have r, we have theta. Now, n in our problem, n is equal to what? Well, we're finding the fourth root, okay? So n is 4. And then we have to evaluate this for k equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right, so now your question might be, well, where did that come from? All right, so remember, n is equal to 4. So if we come over here, n is 4, remember that? So k goes from 0 to n minus 1. So it goes from 0 to 4 minus 1 because n is 4, which this is 3. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, that's where the k comes from. All right, so all we do now, basically, as we evaluate this thing at k equals 0, k equals 1, 2, and 3. All right. So let's do that. So when k is equal to 0, okay, 
So now we just plug everything into here. So that is the fourth root, okay, n is 4, the fourth root of 16 times, <clears throat> and then this is what? Theta, which is 120 plus 360 times 0 over 4. Nope, oh, I'm sorry. Forgot to write the cosine in there, didn't I? So it's the cosine of 120 plus 360 times 0 over 4 plus i times the sine of 120 plus 360 times 0 over 4. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so that's what we're doing. And then we have to do this again for k equals 1. So we would write all this down again and replace the 0 with 1. And then we would do it again, replace the, uh, replace k with 2. Okay. Now, let's, let's do this. Notice the only thing that's changing is this right here, this k value. So the only thing that's going to be different in each, when k is 0, 1, 2, and 3, the only thing that's going to be different is this part here. And notice they're both the same. Okay. So instead of writing all this out, let's just get each angle and then just replace this with the angle. All right. So yes, you can do k equals 0, calculate that. k equals 1, write all this down again, calculate it. k equals 2, write all this down. Well, let's, let's just do this so it won't be so complicated. <clears throat> well, all right. So I want you to know this, that instead of writing it all out like this, you see your your complex number here, there is a way you can write this shorthanded. This can be abbreviated using this, CIS theta. Okay, This is the abbreviation for this. So let's go ahead. We have, we have this now. So this is going to be the fourth root of 16 is 2 times and then cosine and then 120 plus 0 is 0. 120 divided by 4 that's going to be 30 degrees plus i times sine 30 degrees. <clears throat> okay so this would be the first one when k is 0. Now let's go when k equals 1. Okay, k equals 1. So remember it's the nth root of r, so that's the fourth root of 16. And now for k, for k, we're going to plug in the 1. So that's going to be, now look what I'm doing. I'm using the abbreviated form of it. Instead of writing cosine sine, I'm just using the abbreviation like I showed you here. Okay, so this is going to be 120 plus 360 times 1 over 4. Okay, so this would give me, that is going to be, let's see, 120 plus 360 divided by 4. That is 2 the fourth root of 16 and that is going to be 120 degrees. Okay, so and we can go ahead and write this. This is going to be 2. We'll write it in abbreviated form also. So look, here's our first two complex roots. Okay, that's the first two. Now let's find when k equals 2. So that's the fourth root of 16 
and that's going to be 120 plus 360 and this time k is 2 so times 2 over 4 equals now the fourth root of 16 is 2 and then 120 plus 360 times 2 divided by 4 that is going to give us 210 degrees so this is our third root okay all right now when k equals 3 so that's the fourth root of 16 and that's 120 plus 360 times 3 over 4 so the fourth root of 16 that's 2 I'm using the abbreviated form so that's 120 plus 360 times 3 divided by 4 that is 300 degrees and there's our fourth one okay so these are our four fourth roots of this okay now the other thing you can do you can convert these to rectangular form okay some books may ask you to do that I'm not going to do that we're already up on 16 minutes okay but but one thing that we, we we can do is with these solutions we can graph them and I'll show you real quick it's not difficult to graph these things now let me show you real quick how to do that all right so to graph it all right so it's going to be on a circle Let's see how good I can draw a circle so this is a circle with radius 2 okay and so we have we have 30 degrees which is about right there so that's 30 degrees this is our 2 30 degrees and then we have a hundred and twenty degrees which is going to be about right in there okay this would be to 120 degrees and then we have 210 degrees which is about right here so that would be two 210 degrees and then we have 300 degrees which would be right there so that'd be two okay so that would that's what it would look like graphing these but you know there it is that's how you do it it's you know the main thing you have to get this thing in trigonometric form uh, and that's the process of doing that and then it's just plugging into this formula is all it is and you got to do it for the k values from zero to n minus one so however many roots you're finding it's that many roots minus one so k would be in this case four zero one two three and I mean you see that I plugged into the whole thing here I didn't use the abbreviation but here I did okay all right so I hope this helped uh, give me a like share subscribe and thanks for watching